Okay, so uh, they don't know, no, none of these people know what gravity is, and here you have uh, what we were doing these other uh, days, okay? Well, we start out with this situation where we this have... Is, this is your new obsession. Well, yeah, I'm just going to, because nobody's answered that, but essentially we have a tree, okay, and we built the van over the tree. Okay, and uh, what happens? Uh, you Just have... to do an experiment, we built a car on a tree. <laughs> yeah. So, so we we put a we built the car on a tree, or let's say say we parked the car there for a long time, and a tree grew, grew under it. Just to be clear, there's no floor on the car. Yeah, there's no floor, and the the tree is not touching any part of the van. It's just underneath it, okay, not touching any part of the van. It's exactly in that sense, like that molecule, that atom there, whatever you want to call it, a particle. Okay, but what happened? That air molecule. Okay, it's just floating around. Okay, so what happens? When we accelerate the van, okay, this is what you should expect, okay? The tree stays behind, but it turns out that the particle also stays behind, okay? So we ask you, well, why did this tree stay behind? And you say, well, the tree is stuck to the ground. Well, why did the particle stay behind if it's not stuck to the ground, okay? You see where the problem is? You have to answer why the particle stayed behind. And what do people answer? They say, well, a force did not, a force, you know, force being a physical object, Force did not push the particle. That's what they say. It never occurred to them that maybe a force, whatever that force is, kept it there. So they only talk about moving it. But see, they didn't say that for the tree. They said, well, the tree didn't move, not because a force didn't push it, until the van touched it, right? The back of the van, but because it stuck to the ground. Okay, that's how they say. Okay, so we have to create a different situation for these people to understand. Now we have the tree just lying underneath there. It's not stuck to the ground. Okay? So neither the tree nor the particle are stuck to the ground. What happens when the van accelerates? Well, now both of them, again, stay behind. In the case of the tree, now you say what? Again, the force did not come and push the tree. Is that what you're going to say? How about uh, a force keeping it there before something pushed it? Did you about ever... gravity? Yeah, exactly. We're talking about Good gravity. Good old gravity. Good old gravity. And oh, that's sorry, what... electricity. And so here we have the situation where some people say, well, you know, we have all these molecules that are keeping the uh, particle in place. And so, but if that were the case, you know, other uh, air molecules, then the band would move all mar particles at the same time, including the one that, uh, the target molecule, right? The target atom or whatever, the target particle. Okay, so you can't say that the reason that particle stayed behind is because it was kept in place by all these other molecules, because if that were the case, they would all move together. Instead, what we see is this situation, okay, where, um, give it a second here, where some particles are being pushed first. Uh, sorry. Did I get the right one? Oh, I guess that's the one I meant. Uh, I got the wrong one. There it is. Oh, okay. That's the one I wanted to see. Okay, so here you see see the uh, particles are being pushed one at a time. You can see the red particle does not move until the other, other particles touch it, you know? And so the issue is, what keeps the red particle in place? And you might say the other particles, see, but the other particles are touching all the other particles. So you can't say that it's the other particles that keep it in place. Something else is keeping that red particle in place aside from all the molecules that are, uh, you know, next to it. That's, That's what you got to say. the combination of gravity pulling it against the sea of marbles underneath. Correct, correct. So we do have a sea of marbles underneath it, but that's not the only force, right, acting upon it. We have the force of gravity. Well, let's not use the word force. Yeah, yeah. and so it's we have to identify what the force of gravity it. is. Okay, and so here we have it. Okay, and this is just a picture of that. We need to know why the molecule, the red molecule there, is staying in place until the other molecules that are pushed by the van come in contact with it. That means that the other molecules are not the only ones keeping it in place, because here I artificially drew some spaces between them when there are no spaces. Okay, so that's the situation. Okay, so what do we propose? Well, we say gravity is something else, and it looks more or less like this. The particle stays in place, aside because of all the other molecules, because every atom on Earth is bound to that molecule, and that molecule is bound to every atom on Earth. Okay, I didn't draw all the connections, okay? But that molecule is staying in place, more or less in place. It does move a little bit, right, in their region, but not as fast as when the band hits it, mm -hmm. right? But you can see it's staying more or less in place. Why? Because it's connected to every atom on Earth. And here we have someone who vouches for that, and that's oh, Mr. Richard Muller. Did you, did you give Mr. Andy money for us? <laughs> <Just> paying you? <laughs> every atom on Earth is pulling on every atom of you. You're also pulling on it. Okay? And now the question is, how do you explain that statement there, those two statements there? How do you explain those two statements with ether, with electricity, with space-time? I'll let you have your pick. I don't care. Okay? You pick whatever you want. 
please explain how every atom on earth is pulling on every atom of you and how you're pulling also pulling on it with anything that comes to your mind. I don't care. Okay, just explain it. Explain those two statements. If you cannot explain those two statements, you have no theory that's worth even listening to. Okay, so that's the situation. People say, oh, I know everything about gravity. It's the ether. It's the electricity. Just tell me how or space time or whatever. Just tell me how it is that every atom on Earth is pulling on that atom on every atom in your body and how every atom of your body is pulling on every atom on Earth. Gravity goes right through things. That's what Mr. Mulder said. Does that mean the gravity particles that every atom is shooting to every atom? Would that be the thing? Well, if you're shooting, if yeah. Every I, atom on Earth is, <laughs> would have to be shooting these neg the negative momentum oh, particles. Oh, negative momentum. The well, negative yeah, momentum particles, that, but to every other atom. That means at every moment it's shooting just a line of negative. Through the others. Through the others, too. Real good aim. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if you're going to do this with gravitons, well, good luck. you got a big mess. God, God would go crazy with his lot. computer trying to shoot through all these little balls, through other balls to hit yeah. this and bring it back. I mean, through <laughs> the other balls. Oh, my God. Yeah.